Welcome to 60 Skills. Today we will discuss the Qi circulation method. The Qi circulation method is a very old technique used in internal meditations by which you move energy using the mind. Previously, if you have done my course on clairvoyance, clairaudience, and clairsentience, the sensory gate exercises where you would breathe energy in and breathe energy out are examples of this. The most famous version of this technique is the use of the micro and macrocosmic orbits. But the fact of the matter is there are hundreds if not thousands of different ways to employ this technology. Use of this technology greatly enlivens the ligaments, tendons, and soft tissue as well as brings the energy down to a very near astral or near vital state. As such, it is one of the fundamental training techniques used in internal martial arts. So, come along with me today and join 60 Skills as we explore the Qi Circulation Method. Welcome to 60 Skills. I will now discuss the requirements for practicing the Qi Circulation exercises. Fundamentally, there is only one. You need to be able to pour, breathe, and engage at a minimum vital energy. The fact of the matter is, virtually any energy can be utilized with this technology. So the more energies you know how to work with, the more opportunities you have to work with this. As a practical matter, this technology can be employed sitting, standing, or walking. So it's actually quite versatile. For those of you who already know how to perform the micro or macrocosmic orbits, you will be very familiar with the basics of this technology. The technology can also be employed utilizing breath retention, utilizing one circulation per breath, or utilizing multiple circulations per breath. But fundamentally, as long as you are able to perform poor breathing and generate vital energy, those are all the basic skills you need to perform this course. Let us begin. Welcome to 60 Skills. We will now discuss what is qi, and by extension, what are the qi circulations. One of the problems with the Chinese language is that definition is largely a function of context. So what kind of qi you're talking about has a lot to do with how you are defining the term. It can be loosely correlated with breath, which works for our purposes, or in most cases, vital force. However, the qi circulation technique can be applied to virtually any energy you choose. So just understand that if you are using vital force or astral energy as an analogy for qi, it works just fine for the purpose of these exercises. For our purpose, the qi circulation exercises can be applied to any of the subtle energies. Do keep in mind, as per usual, if you are using something that has an electric or magnetic bias, i.e. a fire or water orientation, or an air or earth orientation, that after practicing with a given energy, you need to work with its counterbalancing force. So if you are working with the planetary meditations, obviously you're looking at lunar energy as the counterbalancing force. With fire, water. With air, earth. With akasha, non-dual light so on and so on and so on. Because these subtle energies can all be defined a variety of ways. Whether you are talking about Qi, Jing, or Shen, or you're talking about the seven planetary energies of Luna, Mercury, Venus, the Sun, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. Whether you're talking about the basic four elemental energies of fire, air, water, and earth, whether you're talking about akasha and non-dual light, vital energy, astral energy, mental energy, or the 27 letters of Barden's Kabbalah. The simple fact of the matter is the technology that we are about to explore works just fine for all of them. All right, we've talked a little bit about different energies. Now let's talk about what are the qi circulations. Well, classically, the two biggest qi circulations are known as the microcosmic or macrocosmic orbit. This is a method by which you loop energy in the body by going from the base of the spine up the back to the top of the head, down the front of the body. This can be used as a generative power technique or a technique that generates ability. Specifically in this case, 
If you perform the orbits three to four hours a day for 100 days straight, you can eventually generate a small amount of akasha. This in turn results in kundalini awakening, which gives you access to the power of the void, and by extension, the power of non-dual light. However, there are literally hundreds, if not thousands, of different chi circulation patterns. The three we will be dealing with today are palm to opposite heel, front to back, and side to side. The leading practitioner of this methodology, as of the time this video is recorded in 2021, is a man by the name of Gary Kleiman out of Chicago, Illinois. He's a temple-style Tai Chi practitioner, and he has multiple integrated sets of practice involving the Chi circulation form, and his training is highly recommended. The purpose of today's training is to give you an introduction to how this technology works and explain a few reasons why you might want to learn it. So, let us begin with the Qi circulation form. Welcome to 60 Skills. We will now discuss why train the Qi circulation form. As was briefly discussed earlier, the use of the micro and macrocosmic orbits for three to four hours a day for 100 days straight will generate the equivalent of kundalini awakening somewhere between day 30 and day 100. This is a spontaneous rising of energy up the spinal cord and out the top of the head. In doing so, a practitioner gains access to a small amount of akasha, which is in fact the power of the void. Once this is attainable, you can then draw all the other associated energies you need in unlimited amounts directly out of the void. Also, by getting to the point of the void, it then opens the possibility of encountering non-dual light, which is the state of supreme existence or true mind associated with enlightenment. Okay, fair enough. Training the orbits is a full-time course in and of itself, and there are many good sources for this. Personally, I recommend two people, either kundaliniawakeningprocess.org or, for a more comprehensive system of chi circulation training, a man by the name of Gary Kleiman, based out of Chicago, Illinois. Now, we've talked about how there are the chi circulation methods that deal with the orbits, but the fact of the matter is there are, again, hundreds if not thousands of different individual chi circulation forms. Why do these exist? Well, it turns out the process of training the chi circulation form generates a kind of density to the energy that people who do not train this, strangely enough, do not have. Now, it depends on what you're trying to do with your energy work. If you're primarily interested in out-of-body projection, limiting your work with the chi circulation form to the sensory gate exercises is really all you need because you're basically just trying to generate clairvoyance and clairaudience. On the other hand, if you have more physical pursuits in mind, such as martial arts or sports, or basically anything that requires you to be stronger, faster, and more resilient, this is where the chi circulation form becomes very important. Because the energy utilized in this enters a near astral or vital level. As a result, it greatly innervates the ligaments, tendons, and fascia in the body. Now, this has the process of not only engaging those weakly innervated or nerve-linked tissues, giving you more control over them, it also highly oxygenates those tissues, resulting in their growing stronger and thicker and more flexible. This, again, is very interesting. If you've ever laid hands on someone who's been a long-term practitioner of the internal martial arts, you'll notice frequently that it feels as if there's almost a sheet of plastic underneath their skin. The chi circulation form is one of the technologies that results in this ability. I personally have broken two vertebrae in my back in a failed parachute accident. Interestingly enough, several years later when x-rays were taken, other than the deformation of the broken vertebra, there were no fracture lines left in the bones. This had completely healed. My doctor at the time came across as quite surprised and basically said he never would have known that I had broken those vertebra were it not for the fact that they were not the right shape. So this technology not only makes you much stronger 
in much faster that greatly improves healing and improves neurological recruitment and function. The people who perform these techniques with great regularity tend to be re remarkably strong regardless of size. One of my teachers in question was a woman who weighed about 45 kilograms or about 100 pounds. I personally watched this individual rip the handle off car doors when distracted. This technology is one of the things that results in that kind of strength. Now, this is something that you have to train for an extended period of time to generate this kind of development. However, an hour or two a day with this technique for a period of 18 months to two years generates a kind of permanent ligament and tendon strength, and interestingly enough, energetic strength, that seems to last for the rest of a practitioner's life. Additionally, most people will find the use of this technology highly innervating. It's very animating and can greatly reduce the amount of sleep you need to use. However, like anything that generates an effect like this, if you fail to practice, you do not get that kind of short-term benefit. So understand, training the chi circulation techniques will make your energy stronger, will provide a kind of density to your energy, will further reinforce your ligaments, tendons, and fascia tissue, will greatly increase neurological recruitment, and can greatly enhance injury recovery as well. All of these are very good reasons to engage in this technology. Let us begin. Welcome to 60 Skills. We will now discuss methods for training the chi circulation form. Things like the micro and macrocosmic orbit train the chi circulation form while seated. But as you will see in the three sample exercises later on in this course, these can be performed standing. The techniques can also be performed with movement. Now you initially learned a very basic form of the chi circulation exercises when studying the clairvoyant and clairaudient techniques in other parts of this coursework. In this, you're moving energy in and out of the eyes, in and out of the ears, so on and so forth. However, when you learn how to engage the electric and magnetic lines and then combine this with movement, the performance of this technology becomes much more powerful. So when you're training this, you need to look at the seated to the standing to the moving techniques as a progression in strength and potency of this technology. Now there are certain exceptions. For example, the microcosmic ma macrocosmic orbits are a developmental level technology that can be used to liberate the Kundalini within the body. And by definition, Akasha, fair enough. That said, if you engage the electric walk when you're doing your clairvoyant and clairaudient exercises, you'll notice the results are vastly improved. Just as if you engage the magnetic line while working with the clairsentience and clairgustinance or subtle sense of smell and taste exercises, you will notice a vast improvement in their effectiveness as well. It turns out movement, when properly harnessed through the electric and magnetic lines, greatly invigorates the movement of energy through the body, which in turn will enhance your use of the mind in the chi circulation form to move energy around. For those of you familiar with things like the long form in Tai Chi, your application of this technology will also greatly enhance the energetic forms and effects from that, as would the five fist from Xing Ying, circle walking from Bagua, or any of the other internal arts. The simple fact of the matter is, this chi circulation form can be applied to virtually any internal pursuit. It can even be applied to the asanas of yoga. Although, of course, you will need to do some research to figure out how the energy is supposed to track in each given asana. So, as I've just mentioned, there are many different ways to train this technology, some of which have more energetic or qualitative effects, some of which have more raw power or quantitative effects. Either way you look at it, the chi circulation form is an excellent way of enhancing your ability to work with energy. Even people who work with Reiki, being able to drive the energy with the mind more effectively is going to enhance the effect of that technology. 
Now, for a lot of you who have learned some basic Qigong that involves things like build the ball and other techniques, you can now see how you can even enhance those techniques as well. So the Qi circulation form is a very potent way of working with energy that can be applied through a variety of methodologies. Let us begin. Welcome to 60 Skills. We will now discuss the issue of training the Qi circulation form using the breath versus spinning. When trained with the breath, you'll pull the energy in on the inhale and out on the exhale. This is a very soft and very slow way of ensuring that you get the technique correct. And this is how you should train everything in the beginning. However, with experience, you can speed this up. At that point, you'll do multiple ins and outs on an inhale and multiple ins and outs through a given pattern on an exhale. This will greatly increase the sensation and flow of energy through the body. That said, this can be done long enough and hard enough that it can be a little overwhelming. So in the beginning, you are going to want to link the movement of energy with the breath. One movement on the inhale, one movement on the exhale. With practice, you will be able to accelerate this to multiple movements on the inhale and multiple movements on the exhale. Then as you further practice the technique, you will want to slow it back down again. At a certain point, you will reach a point where the energy begins to move on its own. This is, again, a natural progression of this technique. For people who have worked with the microcosmic and macrocosmic orbits, they've noticed that over time, as they got better at them, they didn't need to link their breath anymore with the circulation of the energy through that loop. It just took on a life of its own. This is the same thing. Because you are moving the energy so directly through the ligaments, tendons, and fascia, it takes on a near vital or near, near astral effect. When it does this, momentum begins to take effect as well. This is one of the reasons why in Hermetics we have certain numbers that we associate with certain patterns. The number nine, for example, is concerned with rhythm. So if you can do nine breaths in, out, in, out very quickly, what you'll find is once you're done practicing, the energy continues to move in that pattern. So again, this would seem to indicate that we are dealing with a semi-physical effect. This in turn, because the energy is so near the physical world, greatly enhances the physical performance of various activities. So keep in mind the issue of moving the energy with the breath versus spinning or multiple movements is not an either or type proposition. You are going to want to use the first to learn the technique properly and make sure the energy moves through the right pattern. Then you will want to use the second part, the spinning, to move it rapidly and strengthen that line in the body. Finally, when you start to finish the exercise, you will want to slow down again relinking the movement of energy with the breath, one on the inhale, one on the exhale. This is a more balanced way of engaging and training these energies. Keeping in mind, if you properly learn this system from someone, you will be using a dozen, two dozen, or more different circulations within the body. At that point, the fascia tissue will receive a real workout, and you will energetically be quite strong. And all of this can be done in one or two hours per day. Let us begin. Welcome to 60 Skills. We will now discuss the issue of electric and magnetic as it applies to the Qi circulation form. Most schools that teach this material only teach it piecemeal and generally only employ an electric body posture. This can result in some long-term imbalances both energetically and psychologically in its practitioners. So as you are performing these techniques, it is best if you alternate between an electric body posture and a magnetic body posture while doing this. What do I mean? Well, for those of you familiar with my body training work in this series, you already know the answer to that. For those of you who have not, this is what it means. An electric body posture involves pulling from the top of the head as, as if suspended by a string, tongue on the roof of the mouth or behind the two front teeth, pushing out through the fingertips, 
while simultaneously turning or torquing the tissue outwards, both at the hands and arms and the feet. Doing this greatly enhances the push of energy out of the body. This is further reinforced through the use of the chi circulation techniques. Again, some people would call this a very fiery, a very electric, or very yang type presentation of energy. For any number of things, this is highly valuable. And has already been, as, as, has already been, as has already been stated, greatly strengthens the soft tissue in the body as well. However, to provide balance, you also need to perform this in a magnetic body posture. That involves spreading the back open by pulling from the top of the head and the base of the spine at the same time, and instead of pushing out the fingertips, pulling the joints open. This results in a soft inward drawing of energy. It also works the fascia, ligaments, and tendons in the body in a completely different direction. This essentially provides a yin or water type magnetic counterbalance to those yang or electric or firing, fiery type body positions. Ideally, you will want to perform these in equal measure. You will again need to explore with this. Most men find the electric body postures easier. Most women, unsurprisingly, find the magnetic body postures easier. Regardless of gender, you need to perform equal amounts of both or problems can ensue over time, both psychological and physical. You will also notice that strengthening the magnetic line, interestingly enough, has bigger effects on energetic strength than working with the electric, even if the electric is more noticeable when you are actually performing the exercises. It's a curious thing, but something that many of us have noticed over the years. When I originally learned these systems, I only learned the electric line. And even today, after years of practice, the magnetic line when performing any of this is far weaker in my case. While this has definitely had some impacts upon my psychology and physiology, it really wasn't that big of a problem. That said, if you look at long-term practitioners of things like Muay Thai or kickboxing, and you juxtapose that individual with a long-term practitioner of something like jujitsu, which is very magnetic, you can see some very definite differences in their personalities. The bottom line is it is important to practice both the electric and the magnetic aspects of these techniques. So again, keep in mind, the positioning of the fascia has as much to do with the direction and movement of energy as the use of the mind to do this and will have long-term and important effects upon your development. Let us begin. Welcome to Six. We will now demonstrate the front to back chi circulation. In this chi circulation, you are using a shoulder width stance. You are inhaling through the palms of the hands, both at the same time, exhaling out the palms of the hands. So you inhale through the palms of the hands and the forearms, exhaling out the palms of the hands. Inhaling in, the lower, exhaling out. Initially, the movement will be conducted one inhale movement and one exhale movement. With practice, this will become multiple movements and multiple chi circulations per breath, going in, out, in, out, in, out, in, out, with greater and greater speed. Again, this may be performed with any energy you choose, keeping in mind the need to counterbalance using anything vital, natural, kasha, let us begin. So with this equal Inhale, exhale. 
Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. You will feel this rumble through the ligaments and tendons on the inhale and particularly on the exhale. Inhale through the palms and forearms. Exhale through the palms. Now we're going to do it fast. Inhale, 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 inhale. Exhale. Inhale, inhale, inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Now make it soft. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. If you begin to feel the body shake, this is normal. Three more times. One more. Come back to yourself. Shake out a little bit. Pour, breathe until all energy, sensation, colors, and sounds have left the body. This concludes the exercise.